and welcome back to our Tridelphia YouTube Sabbath School class for this week. We are starting a totally new quarter as you, we kind of promoted last weekend when we were talking about missions and everything. This whole last quarter was on missions. Great quarter. Go back and check it out. Um, but Psalms. I don't remember there being this topic for a while, so it's really cool. Um, the Psalms is a really deep topic, and you can go as light or as heavy as you want on the topic of the Psalms. Um, the Psalms are there for comfort. They're there for praise and thanksgiving. And, uh, of course, before we dive into uh, this week's lesson, uh, let us go ahead and pray. Uh, Pastor Sam, could you could you pray? Pray with you, Heavenly Father. We thank you again for this opportunity to share this study with our audience, those who are on YouTube. We especially pray for each one of them as they study your word, as they open it up. We invite your Holy Spirit to be with us and to open our understanding. We thank you again for being our God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we're going to just go over a couple of lists, uh, this list of lessons. We got um, just a few, 13 to be exact. Um, there's always 13th Sabbath where we have um, usually kids programs at Tridelphia. So if, if you're around for 13th Sabbath, it's usually kind of a mission emphasis, division, uh, somewhere in the world global report. Um and uh, that would be like 13 Sabbaths from now. So you have time to plan and come visit us. Uh, but if you have any questions as we dive into these lessons, of course, feel free to email pastor at tridelphiachurch.org. Um, I know on some of the prophetic lessons we talk about are super in-depth stuff. Um, certain theological aspects come up and you might have a question. So feel free to email pastor at Tridelphia church.org but a couple of the lessons um this quarter of course today is how to read the psalms but we got teach us to pray you know a lesson about the lord hearing and delivering um singing the lord's song in a strange land wisdom for righteous living lessons of the past longing for god in zion and waiting on the lord just to name a few so stick with us this quarter because we're going to have a a great lesson on the Psalms. Okay, so start off, Pastor, could you read the memory text for this week? Memory text is found in Luke chapter 24, verse 44. Then he said to them, These are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. Oh, it's really cool is we just talked about the story there in Luke uh, 24 a couple weekends ago. Um, that's the story of the road to Emmaus. Beautiful story. Um, but this is not like a isolated element from the New Testament. There is so much references back to the Psalms, both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. Um, and just to get started here, uh, Pastor, what's your favorite psalm? My favorite psalm is Psalm 8. I really enjoy Psalm 8 because of, um, again, an invitation to know God, not just through his word, but also through nature. Ah, beautiful, beautiful. It For me, I find it super hard to pick, but if I had to pick, I'm going to pick two. And, of course... Go ahead and comment in, in, in the YouTube chat here or on, on the comment uh, section below. What are your favorite psalms? Mm -hmm. Or if you have a favorite psalm, um, maybe there's a specific verse that stands out to you. Go ahead and, and share that and, and why that's meaningful to you. Okay, mine is Psalms 27. Um, I think that is one that I really appreciate. There's there's some beautiful music set to this by a couple different um, artists or uh, composers, but it, it just starts off with the aspect, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength, stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And then it goes, it goes on to 
share some very comforting thoughts. Um, and of course, I guess the, the, the second one I was going to talk about is, um, of course, Psalms 91, which is also kind of a, a psalm of, of comfort in, um, when you're, when you're dealing with, with big challenges. Uh, but you know, as, as I think about this, you, <laughs> There's so many other psalms that come to mind, whether it's Psalms 103, Psalms 51, um, all these different elements that end up being an encouragement, and they end up being that stronghold, that fortress, that foundation in, a, in our Christian walk. Why are psalms so important? They're important because they're part of not just the corporate liturgical um, setting that we might find when we go to church, when we hear it, you know, mentioned from the pulpit in a call to worship or um, in a song, a hymn. But it also is, is something that is, is part of our personal devotion. And something that I think most of us tend to um, gravitate towards when we are looking for encouragement, hope, um, promises. Most of us, when we're going through a difficult time, we open up the book of Psalms and we find encouragement there. So I think it, it becomes part of our own devotional life. It becomes part of our own um you know, kind of these are the verses like you mentioned. We go to, you know, specifically in certain situations. We know Psalm 91 is the one we go to when, when we have and, someone. And like, for instance, when you visit someone in the hospital, um, Psalms right. is one of the the most calming, beautiful sections. Yeah, you can go to Proverbs, mm -hmm. but Proverbs end up having so many different topics per chapter. Whereas when you're in Psalms, it's, it's kind of a general theme or two within a, with, I don't know, of course, if you go to Psalms 119, you got multiple themes going on in there. It's, it's, they just got everything in there. But um, one thing I really like is Second uh, Peter 121, of course, says, For prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. And when I, when I look at that and I, I compare that, yes, there's, there's the various sections of prophecy in the Old Testament, for example, but there's also the element of Psalms. The Psalms are also part of the Old Testament and they were also inspired. And um, the other element I want to say is I feel like the Psalms are the least controversial. Um, because sometimes, you know, people may not want to hear straight up doctrine or prophecy right away. And it's kind of a neutral ground, but it's not vanilla. I don't want to say, I'm not trying to push it to something that's saying it's just plain and boring. No, there's such depth. And yes, there is theology and doctrine buried in the depth of these praises and thanksgivings and cryings out to God. Um, but it just comes at a whole different, different angle. You, you, you do. You, you're correct, Peter. It, it, it's packaged differently. In fact, um, poetic language, figurative language, language um, which is how the Psalms are, are written in, um, it, it's concise and also very, um, it, 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 it moves your imagination. You, you actually see things, you know, you, you experience God um, in, in a whole different way. And so I think that's what's so attractive. And I think the other part too is it, it, it's, it's a rhythmic. And we tend to gravitate toward things that have rhythm as well. So it's, it's beautiful. Um, so, so one thing that stood out to me, and I guess I'm embarrassed to admit this, but 
um, yes, there's the 150 Psalms in Psalms, but apparently it's divided up into five books. So uh, book one is uh, Psalms 1 to 41. Uh, book two is Psalms 42 through 72. Book three is Psalms 73 to 89. Uh, book four is Psalms 90 to 106. And book five is Psalms 107 to 150. And when I was talking um, with you, Pastor, before we were diving into this lesson, you pointed out an interesting verse, and I'd like to go there briefly. But And, and this is like something you may not notice because maybe... You, it is because I've gone to the more common psalms um, that people tend to um, gravitate towards. And sometimes when you're reading, you might miss the last couple verses. Yeah, The intro is strong, and then you're reading, and then you get to the end, and you might miss this. But could you read that, that last verse of Psalms 72? Psalm 72, verse 20. The prayers of David, the son of Jesse... Are ended, and then Boom. the titles on that are book three. Boom! Okay, we move right. on to another, another segment. And see, it's just some of those things that, as, as we learn together and grow, is that is one of those things when we're in a community of believers, we get together and we mm-hmm. share, and we learn and we grow. Mm-hmm. And so my growth this week is is realizing that, wow, there's several segments of psalms it's not just one cohesive thing and yes i knew there were segments in like psalms 9 119 for instance Mm -hmm. there's there's specific things and that's always been labeled and you kind of have the hebrew or the english translation with the hebrew or under each subsection of that um that psalm but broken up into the the various things um let's talk a little bit about um how these were used so um what i think is cool is like you can go to mark 12 or john 10 or john 13 and see how you know jesus is referring back um to certain elements of the psalms um and it's it's very quietly dropped throughout his ministry these little elements of 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 the psalms but how did um ancient israel use the psalms in their in their worship no that's a great question um you you see it being used at different um festivals that they practiced in fact um We know from even the Gospels that when Jesus um, was celebrating Passover with his disciples, at the end, it says that they they, they, they basically um, read a psalm or or, or sang together. And and it was probably one of these Hallel um, psalms that um, are commonly still, even today, by Jews. So Um, when you say Hallel, Mm -hmm. what, what do you mean by Hallel? Hallel, I believe, has to do with praise. That's where you also get the word hallelujah, which is praise the Lord in Hebrew. Okay. And, and so these are psalms that are joyful psalms. In fact, they, 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 they express joy. Um, they express, you know, gratitude. They express, you know, deliverance in this case, the Passover. It's a story of, you know, the people of God being delivered from bondage and so it's 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 used throughout these festivals um, throughout the year but also um, on a daily basis um, they they were used they they were repeated and and um and we see how jesus himself used them um for for different occasions Okay, so the like for instance, it talks about the Egyptian halal in the lesson, which is Psalms one thirteen to one eighteen. Then there was the great halal, 
which was Psalms 136, which as soon as I read this first verse, it's going to ring a bell. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. And that's that, that, that beautiful theme that repeats and repeats throughout the section there. Um, now, the lesson also talked about the song of a, songs of ascents. Um, Psalms 120 through 134. Now, what's that whole concept of song of a sense? So every every year, there were certain feasts that they were supposed to attend in Jerusalem. Passover was one of them. Okay, um, so like the three, 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 three main ones or whatever. Correct, the three main ones. And so they were supposed to meet in Jerusalem. They were supposed to go to the temple. They were supposed to bring their offerings at that time as well. And as they traveled to Jerusalem, they had to ascend because Jerusalem is up above in the mountains. And so so everything around it basically is, is valley. Jerusalem is up in a mountain, Mount Zion. You hear that word? And, and so you ascend, and as you ascend, you would sing. And you would kind of um, make it festive. And you would remember some of these great stories of deliverance. And you would kind of retell the story of who God is to those who were listening. And what's so neat is that if you ever want to learn something by heart, there's nothing like putting a tune to it. Mm -hmm. And like your ABCs, you know, I was listening yeah. to someone not too long ago on a plane. <laughs> and she was probably four years old, three years old, but she was singing hold hardly A, B, C, D, E, F, G. That's, and cute. She, that's how she remembers. So I believe many of these psalms were not just recited, like we would Psalm 23, but... They had music and an accompaniment. So it was something they could easily memorize. Yeah, and I think it's interesting. If we go to back to verses like uh, First Chronicles 16, verse 7, mm -hmm. uh, could you read that one? Sure. First Chronicles 16, verse 7 says, On that day, David first delivered this psalm into the hand of Asaph and his brethren to thank the Lord. So and it's a beautiful song. So you see that as like a, a, a thankful thing right there. Mm -hmm. And then if you look at like Nehemiah 12 verse 8, it says, Moreover, the Levites were Jeshua, Benui, Kedmiel, Shariba, Judah, Methinia, who led the Thanksgiving Psalms, he and his brethren. So, you know, whether it's David or some Levites at some point, um, there's, the, there's this aspect of, of thankfulness. And I think it's interesting because sometimes in our, our prayer life, um, at least like I know with me personally, we sometimes can get in a rut of asking for things mm. or um, uh, forgetting that aspect of just taking a moment to breathe and think about all the things like breath mm. <laughs> that we're thankful for. <laughs> we're thankful for life. We're thankful for, you know, having having a place to be. Um, maybe it's the roof over our head. Maybe it's the, the, the meal we've eaten, you know, and, and there, there's so many things to be thankful for. And, um, I, I could say Psalms 18 verse one, you know, I will love you. O Lord, my strength, just mm, such a short, short little piece, but it has such depth to it. And, um, could you read Psalms 30, verse 1? I can read Psalm 30, verse 1. And as you mentioned, um, Peter, also, um, these Psalms, like you mentioned, are, are not just specifically for requests. Um, 
as, as a prayer, you know, where we ask for something, but also it's an opportunity to thank, give thanks to God. It's also an opportunity to uh, reflect on His majesty and also at points also to express our pain, our suffering, which is, you know, part of this life on earth. And until so you have you have uh, uh, a number of of uh, we can say themes that the Psalms express, um, and and so it gives opportunity to share these, I would say, very well expressed emotions. You know, the emotions mm -hmm. are not always easy to express. You know, you, you, yeah. But through these Psalms, you have kind of like an outlet to bring joy. Um, gratitude, thanksgiving, as mm -hmm. well as lamentation, sadness, um, maybe even a little bit of confusion, you know, well, what's going on until when? Some of these questions that pop up in the Psalms. Yeah, okay. Um, Psalm 30 you wanted to share? With? 30 verse 1. <laughs> okay. And then I'll ask my question. 30, okay. It says, I will extol you, O Lord, for you have lifted me up and have not let my foes rejoice over me. So we have we have verses like that. Um, what does it do for like hmm. it? God doesn't need our glorifying him, our extolling of him. He's like he has everything. So it to. To me, it's like I understand it, but I also don't understand it because I'm a sinful human being. And what is it that I extol you, oh Lord, <laughs> for you've lifted me up? You know, like I, sometimes when I see all these like amazing praises and glorifying God for everything, it's like, how can me, uh, sinful boring person <laughs> um how can that be a benefit to god it's really neat that you mentioned this oh. peter because um gratefulness thankfulness is the result of acknowledging what god has done for us mm. and it's more like a like a natural result of receiving forgiveness for our sins okay so once we acknowledge wow my god has cleansed me he's forgiven me he's purified me and we recognize the the, the cost you know this was this was big god gave his son and, and i think that's a, a central theme in the psalms it's it's jesus you know and, and, and god and so it's very um, theocentric, Christ-centric, yeah. um, and and so when, once we recognize what He has done, then our natural reaction is this of, of praise and worship and and gratefulness, and so it's 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 it comes out almost naturally. But as as we see and we read through the Psalms, it's 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 crafted in such a way that. There's so much more than meets the eye. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. And but you, you you mentioned that, and it reminds me of of verses like um, Psalms forty. Mm -hmm. The beginning, you know, I waited patiently for the Lord, and He inclined to me and heard my cry. He brought me out also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay. This is the King James version. And he set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. And he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. And so Amen. when you, um, just you kind of explaining that, you know, reminded me of this verse because this is just exactly how you're saying, you know, we're in a bad place, um, just a disgusting, horrible place in our lives. And he has taken us out of that situation. He's put us on a, a firm foundation. And so from there, um, we can see a, a clear path forward, you know, with that establishing of our goings. And then that aspect of him putting a new song in our heart. So can we praise 
of ourselves? No. Um, you think of, of the triumphal entry when uh, Jesus was coming, coming in to uh, Jerusalem there, and he's sitting on the sign of what the coming king would be. Uh, and everybody's grabbing the palm branches and they're 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 getting the they're getting the feelings and and they're praising and then some folks are like um this doesn't feel right theologically okay and he says if i tell everyone to be quiet these stones are gonna you know so we can get into the the questions of what good does it do for me to actually re raise my hand and praise the Lord mm. or we can accept what he's done for us and take a look at the path he has led us through and in thanking him for the path he's given us to go forward on it's like a natural outpouring amen and in that, what you find too Peter is this idea of um, you, you, you come to realize what God has done is amazing. Yeah. It's like, wow, he got me out of this situation. Mm -hmm. I, in a thousand years, I would have never thought to get out of it. And he brought me out of this miry clay. I was sinking. I was up to my neck. I'm yeah. up to my nose already. And he was like, it's over. There's nothing. I'm I'm done. And somehow he comes and demonstrates his love, demonstrates his power, and and brings us out of this situation. So it's 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 beautiful. And you see how it's so difficult to pick a psalm. It's like a favorite psalm. Because there there's so many gems. Um yeah. So, Psalms 92, verse 1. It is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High. So this is kind of, this is both a statement and it's also commending us this, this path forward. You know, uh, it's a recommendation and a suggestion. Um, and then um, if you want to look up Psalms 105, verse 2. I'm going to share something about Psalm 92. Is okay. That it's also a psalm for the Sabbath. Oh, okay. It's the one psalm for the Sabbath. And because I really like the Sabbath, I feel like this should also be on my favorites list as well. <laughs> so this Sabbath, this afternoon, how about you put on your little list of homework to pop open your Bible and read Psalms 92 and... Um, see how it can touch you this Sabbath day. Um, Psalms 95 verse 2 says, Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. And you know, when it, when it, when it says thanksgiving, I can't help but think of you know this American holiday where we're supposed to be thankful for things. And it, it comes around once a year when... We can be thankful every day. Mm -hmm. And having that spirit of thankfulness in our lives, um, I'm not a doctor, but medically can help us be more content and satisfied um, with where we are in life. Um, back, back in academy, I had, I think I was a sophomore and one of the seniors was giving a devotional thought and she mentioned that she had this this little book that at the end of every day she would write down uh, two or three things that she was thankful for, and they could not overlap. Oh, wow. So um, it was like a progressive uh, prayer journal of of thanks, um, and she would just list down all the things. And every once in a while, I go back and think about that because if I'm in a tough place, if I'm feeling down and discouraged. You know, I just can, I may not necessarily write things, but I can meditate in my mind and just contemplate the things that he has done for me. Like, what are the things that I am thankful for today? 
And after just some time, you know, of, of studying God's word, thinking about some things that you're thankful for, you can take that hand that Jesus extends to us and pull yourself out of the um, pit of despondency and discouragement and despair. Amen. Sure. What's also helpful is that that, that um, you you get to hear this kind of um, same sense of despair in some of these psalms. So you, you kind of see, hey, I'm not the only one who's going through something like this. Somebody else went through this and and he was able to find hope at the end of, of the situation. So it encourages us when we read these psalms. If you could read Psalms 105 verse 2. And it says, Sing to him, sing psalms to him, talk of all his wondrous works. Um, that last sentence, talk of all his wondrous works, reminds me of my grandfather. Um, mm. That was one of the verses I remember him talking about. Mm -hmm. He would bring bring that into... He, he was a, a man who loved nature. He did his bird watching and and all those mm -hmm. things. And so mm -hmm. the concept of, of wondrous works filtering into um, his daily life was a thing. You know, whether he was out in the garden working with his plants after he came back from the clinic, he was he was a doctor, or whether he would be out bird watching on the weekends um, in a local marsh or something like that. Um, <clears throat> uh, creation was, was one of the things that inspired him. And um, when we are in a, a tight place or a, or a challenging place, being able to go out in nature and appreciate what God has created um, is, a, is a simple way of being able to discover some of his wondrous works. And I feel like wondrous works it, here isn't just about nature. There's a deeper aspect as well I, I i i hear you um being in nature is it's 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 an experience when you're at in the um at that at the beach and you can see the ocean you can see the waves and if you like if you're adventurous like myself <laughs> i like to get in the water and and be are you a surfer i did do some um, body surfing. That's what I did, and so I would just go into the waves, and these sometimes were ten foot waves. And I was just like enjoying, just feeling the power that some of those waves have, and as they pull you towards the shore, and um, or something like being on a mountain, you know, walking um, in, in the forest and. And again, seeing that all of this is something that God created, and it's so complex, so difficult, but yet um, it lets us know that he's able to help us with our problems too, regardless of how big they might seem to us. They're pretty small in comparison to everything else he's done. <laughs> Colossians 3 verse 16 says let the word of christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts to the lord so there's that that christ um that word of christ that dwells in you there's that teaching, there's that admonishing, especially in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Like, mm -hmm. in what context w would you say? It's a way of also maybe encouraging one another. Um, I don't know if, if you've had somebody um, write a, you a card, and usually mm. they'll quote a song. Yeah, you yeah. Know, and, and, and it could be to encourage you or because it's your birthday or because it's, um, you know, a special occasion. 
a baptism, it could be a, a wedding, um, and, and these words come in at the right moment to, to just let us know, um, you know, you have someone you can hold onto who will bring you through um, anything, and so it's, it's, it's a way of, of just sharing words of admonition as it's stated here, words of encouragement, um, also maybe words of counsel, wisdom. Mm -hmm. So, so we, we, we are encouraged to not just read them for ourselves and, and go, oh, this is great. But yeah. Maybe text it to someone. My sister texts me a psalm every morning. That's mm -hmm. her ministry. And I think I'm one of 50 other people she does this to. So she just cool. sends out a psalm or a quote from Ellen G. White, you know, and then she combines it and shares it with her, her friends. And so it's, it's a way of, of just sharing good news. Um, James 5, verse 13 says, Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. Um, this week, my uh, dad had a stroke. And it was kind of a challenging experience. And, you know went to Tennessee and um, uh, I, I got there the day after and my mom had arranged with the local pastor and one of the elders who's also um, lives lives near where they live <clears throat> to uh, come in and since it was ICU and stuff it was kind of um, limited and uh, how many people you could come in, but you know, they came in in their suits and stuff. And <laughs> when you're running ministerial credentials, uh, I think you can uh, have less questions when you go into <laughs> a, a medical setting, but uh, it was, you know, it's a Catholic hospital. So there, there was that religious understanding there. And yeah, they read some texts like this from James and, um, I believe they read this one as well, and they did sing. And what was amazing is um, uh, they sang two songs, oh, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, I think, and Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. And my, my dad, um, who had kind of been in and out of it at that point, he was singing along with it. So, you know, it, it's really cool to see how memory d doesn't necessarily get affected by some of these things. And um, some of these songs and psalms are, we did not have hymn books in the ICU there. You know, we didn't even really pull out our phones for any of this stuff. They just had their Bibles and sang by, by memory. And um, he was also singing by memory. And uh, throughout that whole experience, it was just kind of one of those those things that there's encouragements, there's there's psalms, and th there's that gift of of singing. And you know he's doing a lot better now, and it's just really cool to see how God has worked. But um, you know we can think back to these things uh, where there's examples, both in the Old Testament and the New Testament, that if you're in trouble, if there's sickness, if there's suffering, um, there's things like prayer, thanksgiving, singing of psalms that can be an uplifting blessing and be healing in them themselves uh, mm -hmm. through the power of Christ. Mm, beautiful. Just one other thing I want to bring in here is uh, we don't have a lot of time left, but I just want to briefly uh, touch on the aspect of meeting the psalmist. So who do we got here? Well, we've got several of them. We've okay. David. He's okay. Our, our, our main psalmist, and, and we, we always remember Psalm 23 as is one of his famous psalms. Oh, yeah. And of course, many others that, that he also wrote. Psalm 8, as, as, as I mentioned at the beginning, is one of also his psalms. You also have 
um, people like Asaph. Mm -hmm. So have someone by the name of sons of Korah. You also have someone by the name of um, Heman, the Ezraite, and Ethan, the Ezraite, and also a psalm from Solomon and a psalm from Moses. Um, so you have several authors there in the book of Psalms, and um, it just lets you know that this genre of, of, of poetry, of, of, of song, is, is one that has been around for many, 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 many centuries. Mm -hmm. And especially um, some of these authors that we know about, um, like Moses, um, they also took the time to write some beautiful poetry. Mm -hmm. What would be your recommendation for our YouTube audience as we dive into this new quarter as we are looking into Psalms. Yes, we have these various individuals and yes, we've gone over basic, some of the basic foundations and aspects of praise and worship, but is there anything else that you could, um, talk, um, kind of point them to as we begin to study this quarter on the book of Psalms? My one recommendation would be to listen to what psalms or what verses from that psalm speak to you. And if they do, why? And try to answer that question, why does something like Psalm 23 speak to you? Or mm -hmm. Psalm 91? Or Psalm 8? What, what, what is it about the language or the theme, or maybe even um, the imagery that is used um, that is appealing or, or, or you know, attractive to, to you. And, and, and I think you'll, you'll discover something about not only who God is, but also who you are. You know, we could talk about the parallelisms, the imagery, the merisms, the word plays, um, but it comes down to there's the elements of Psalms that are just hymns to magnify and glorify God. There are the hymns of thanksgiving. There's also the laments. Those are the heartfelt cries where you can just feel the pain of the psalmist um then there's just like the the psalms full of wisdom then there's these royal themes in the psalms that are pointing to christ um this this sovereign king this deliverer of god's people which you can take from the old context or pointing towards trials and tribulations in the future um and of course, there's the historical psalms, but in all of this, don't get ca caught up in the technical. Yes, we're going to study it all, but look at how some of these speak to you. And as we mentioned at the beginning of this lesson, um, think of some of the, your favorite psalms. And if you don't have a favorite psalm, we got 13 weeks so you can figure out one that really speaks to you. Um, just read one a day. Um, and of course, if you get to Psalms 119, you can split that up if you need to. But um, what ends up being inspiring to you? What speaks to me today may be different than six months from now. And throughout our life, we got 150 Psalms. You can, <laughs> uh, you could, ha you could, you could pick multiple Psalms per year and have it your whole entire life. But um, I, I think as we prayerfully study uh, the book of Psalms, let us, let the Spirit guide us mm -hmm. and help us to understand, yes, observe and see the beauty of the overall Psalms, but really see how God is speaking through the various psalmists in helping us understand more 
um, and encourage us more in our faith. So, Pastor, could you close us out in prayer? I'll be glad to. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the Psalms that invite us to look at you in, in ways that are encouraging, ways that give us hope, ways that also even in the midst of trials and tribulations um, bring us words that give us peace and we give you praise this morning. We ask for your blessing for all those who are watching. We ask for their families. We ask for health. We ask for encouragement. And Father, we know that you're able to give us all that we need and you're able to um, again show us a beautiful revelation of who Jesus is and as we read these psalms um, throughout this quarter we get a better picture of who you are and also a better picture of who we are and mm -hmm. how you um, are able to um, show your, your majesty and your power and and your character um, in ways that maybe before we thought um, were not possible to perceive. But we thank you for what you will show us this quarter, and we ask your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, thanks again for joining us this week. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with somebody who you might think, hey, this person could know more about the Psalms as we all together learn just a little bit more throughout this quarter and dive deep into the study of the book of Psalms. Take care and happy Sabbath.